I'm going to show you today how to install and set up a Google group for your classroom and a very important step when you're starting off your classes in the beginning of the year to be able to uh, share documents. There's two ways to do groups. There's in Gmail, but those are email groups. Well, the way we're looking at is uh, Google groups to share docs and create a, an email list, but also using Google Docs. So I'm going to show you how to do that. The first thing that I do is I create a spreadsheet with all the names of my student emails and their Google Apps account. In this case, the domain is called teacherportal.ca, but in uh, most places it would be the name of your school board or your school. So once you have this list of names, you highlight them. We'll copy, control C. Then we're gonna go back to our um, Google page and open Google Groups. So click it here. Um, nine icons and wait, Google Groups. So we're going to create a group. Click on the icon and create group. And we'll call it, um, well, this is actually a real live group. So uh, my class, June 14. And notice that whatever you write up here can end up being the name of the group. I always tell people to pick something simple and easy and fast to type. So I'm going to change this to the name of the course code 2014. It's the only one that exists in my domain, so I'm able to use it. I can put a little brief description, my class 2014. And as I look down, I can change some settings. But in my case, I'm going to keep this simple. And for most teachers, this is really all you need is an email list, which sends out um, an email to the students. You can decide to um, change the permissions so that uh, not all people can post to uh, this email list. And what that means is if you have this email called PED2014 at your domain, anybody can post if you don't put some restrictions on it. So I'm going to go down and think about this. Do I want everybody in the organization or the group that I add to be able to post? I don't. I usually leave it that way. Okay. So sometimes I want the students to share something with your group, and uh, that's something you could set up in the settings right from the start. You can always go back and change it if you feel that it's not working, and uh, that's an important step. Okay. So I'm going to click click create. Second here, back in Google Group, and we created, invite people to join this group, sure. There's two ways to do it. I directly add my members way quicker, and usually um, control V, paste all the emails, enter email addresses, oops, in the wrong spot. Put them right up here where it says enter email addresses. And I'll leave this blank. Email subscription option, no email. Send each message as it arrives. In other words, every time you share a Google Doc, they will get a message in their Gmail. Students usually like that because uh, that's the first place I teach them to go look. And it's pretty much the first place most people go look when they open some type of cloud service is that they get an email. All right. So I'm going to scroll and click add. Users are outside the internet and are not valid account. Just a little error there that I remembered. Whenever I paste a list from Excel, I have to uh, put commas at the end here to, to tell the app that this is uh, a new line. So just quickly take a second. Make sure it's not a period but a comma because period will also say that it's not the domain. I'm doing this one thing to be aware of is that uh, if you are putting um, Gmail addresses or addresses that are not from your domain it will restrict you now there's a way to override this setting but uh, it's kind of complicated so the truthfully the best way is that have everybody part of um, the domain the way to override it is to get your domain administrator to enter the addresses. So that means they have to go to the Google Apps panel 
and enter the uh, different um, address. So if you want the student to include a Gmail, uh, you could do that. I don't highly recommend it because the privacy settings are much more uh, safe and uh, appropriate for school environment. If you actually go outside the domain, the odds are, uh, you know, the student's going to get ads and all this kind of stuff, which don't really fit well with the philosophy of most schools. So I'm almost done here. Set all the commas. Quick look, make sure there's no periods. And it'll give me an error if I did. Should be fine here. Okay, so I'm going to click add. Oh, great. Okay, just add a promo here. This is the typo in the original name. Get this back. And all members. Okay, so it missed some of them. Give me one second. Okay, there was a little typo of one of the student's email addresses. I'm sorry about that. And that sometimes what is what happens when I go to my spreadsheet and just type it in as opposed to cut and paste it from the from the domain, which is, you know, less likely to have typos. Usually when you're at the beginning of your class, you're not, you don't know everybody's name and how to st spell it. So let's try this and let's hope I didn't happen uh, twice. So we'll add all these people. And 29 people were added. If I want to check, I can click all members. And there they are. And when they were added, I'm going to go to a, my Google Drive and just we do a quick demo. So let's pretend I wanted to share this activity. So I'm going to click share. And now what I can do, take out these names. Actually, no, they're fine. So if I wanted to share it with them, I just type PED2014 at name of the domain. CA, decide if they want, <coughs> excuse me, if they're able to edit this document, comment, or simply view it. Usually when I share stuff with students that I, I want to distribute materials instead of photocopying, I just share it so they can view it. Click share and save, and that is it. And they will receive it in their email. Thank you very much. Hope this tutorial was helpful.